Aloha, I'm Hawaiian Dan with SeaEagle.com. Welcome to the 437 Paddle Ski Video Instructions. For those of you who have been loyal paddle ski owners, the new 437 Paddle Ski is simply going to blow your mind with modern features such as a high pressure drop stitch inflatable floor that you can stand on, the ability now to take up to a six horsepower engine. And for those being introduced to the paddle ski for the very first time, stay tuned because there's plenty of information in this video to help you decide if the new Sea Eagle Inflatable Paddle Ski 437 is right for you. Now let's get rolling. You'll want to have handy a number two Phillips head screwdriver, two 7 16th wrench, a half inch wrench, and or an adjustable wrench or pliers for the one time only setups. Start by locating an area free of hazards and unpack all the contents of your package. Now depending on which package and additional optional accessory you've purchased, you should have the following items a 437 paddle ski, transom kit, bow support yoke kit, one or two paddle ski swivel seat kits, one or two paddles, a manual pump, and a repair kit. There's also the optional Water Snake Venom 34 electric motor, Minn Kota trolling motor power center, Honda 5 horsepower gas motor, sun and rain canopy, and BP-12 electric pump to make inflation even easier. Unfold your paddle ski. There are five separate independent air chambers for added safety. At the front end, remove the air valve caps by turning them to the left and lifting them out to access the center valve stems for the floor and two front side chambers. There are also two rear side chamber air valves located midship. Press down on the center valve stems and quarter turn it to the left until they spring into the up closed valve position. This will prevent any air from escaping the valves during inflation. To inflate your Sea Eagle, locate your manual hand SUP pump and screw on the hose with a hook and style recessed valve adapter. The adapter side has a rubber gasket on it, so be sure that the groove side of the gasket is facing out. If it's not, simply flip the gasket over and make sure that the groove side is facing out. Then attach it to your recessed air valve by pushing it in, turning it to the right until the hooks lock into place. Now start by selecting the double action. This inflates during both the up and down strokes. When it gets hard to pump, switch over to single action, which makes it even easier by only inflating during the down strokes and using your body weight as leverage. Start with the floor first, inflating it to eight to 10 PSI. Sea Eagle offers a line of electric pumps to make inflation even easier. Attach the pump hose to your recessed air valve by pushing it in and turning it to the right until the hooks lock into place. Then press the on button and your hands free. The pump will automatically shut off once a desired PSI setting has been reached. Remember to only use Sea Eagle recommended pumps as they have been thoroughly tested for use with Sea Eagle products. Never ever use an air compressor as they can easily damage your Sea Eagle and possibly cause you bodily harm. Non-recommended pumps void your Sea Eagle warranty. Next, inflate both front sections of the side chambers to 3.2 PSI and the rear sections to about half of that. Locate your transom kit, which includes the transom, four long hex head bolts, eight flat washers, and four threaded knobs. Install the transom with the small transom plate with a little loop facing forward towards the front of your paddle ski. If the grommets are tight, gently pry them apart with a screwdriver. If the holes at the bottom of the transom are not aligned with the floor grommets, just release some of the air from the rear chambers until they align. You may have to slightly guide the transom into position. Then, slide a washer onto the bolt and starting with the floor first, slide the bolt with the washer through the rear of the floor grommet, through the transom, and out the front of the grommet, and tightly secure it on the front side with a washer and a threaded knob. Finish attaching the floor, then the side chambers. A half inch wrench is recommended to securely tighten each bolt. Top the side rear chambers off to 3.2 PSI and remember to replace all the air valve caps. Locate the bow support yoke kit. You should have a 37 inch by two inch aluminum yoke bar with pre-drilled holes on each end, two short hex head bolts, four flat washers, and two threaded knobs. Fold the D-rings closest to the front of the hull outward. Place a washer over a bolt, then run the bolt up through the D-ring. Repeat this step on the opposite side. Place the yoke bar over the bolts, being sure that the bolts pass through the pre-drilled holes, then slide on a washer and tightly secure it in place with the threaded knobs. Locate your paddle ski swivel seat kit or kits for their one-time assembly. Once assembled, it's not necessary to take them apart. For each kit, locate the aluminum H-frame. 
swivel seat, and four small hex head bolts, washers, and locking nuts. Turn a seat on its side and offset the swivel plate underneath by pulling on the lever and spinning the swivel plate. Insert one bolt from the top down through a slotted hole in the plate. Pull the H frame up to the bolt so it passes through one of the pre-drilled holes. Slide on a washer and hand tight secure it with a lock nut. Repeat this step with the remaining bolts. Then securely tighten each of them with two 7 16 wrenches. Make sure your seat straps are all open. Place your seat or seats onto the paddle ski by positioning the aluminum crossbars in the center of the seat strap buckles. Run the strap over the aluminum bar, through both D-rings, back over the first D-ring, under the second D-ring, and cinch the strap securely tight. Repeat this step with the remaining straps. Now before each use and periodically, it's important to confirm all straps and seats are securely tightened. To swivel the seat, push the lever forward to release it and back to lock it in place. The paddles can be stowed alongside the seats. Attaching the optional Scotty deck mounts is quick and easy. This is a one-time assembly and once attached, they don't need to be removed. Locate the 7 8 inch fill cap screws from your kit. If you can't find them, be sure to look inside your orange repair kit. It's important only to use these screws as the wrong screws can damage your Sea Eagle and will void your Sea Eagle warranty. With the arrow on the deck mount pointing inboard, insert four screws. Using a Phillips screwdriver, tightly secure it in place. Repeat this step with the remaining optional Scotty deck mount. The Scotty Universal deck mounts can be used to attach a vast array of optional Scotty brand accessories, such as cup holders, a triple rod holder, anchor locks, camera mounting post, and more. All can be found at SeaEagle.com. Optional Water Snake electric motors and the Honda 5 horsepower 15 inch short shaft gas motor are available at SeaEagle.com as well. To attach the motor, seat it onto the transom. Securely tighten the transom bolts and confirm the motor is secure in place. Protecting yourself against the elements is extremely important and the Sea Eagle canopy is a great option. In this video, I'll show you just how easy it is to set up the Sea Eagle canopy. Start by unpacking the contents of the canopy box, which includes the canopy canvas, two U-frames, two scissor support bars with pre-attached adjustable straps, and the associated hardware. Unfold the canvas of your canopy and place it in front of you with the top of the canvas, the rough side facing up, and the smooth side facing down. Next, fold the ends towards the center and position it so that the center cutout is towards the front of your hull. Lay the U-frames on top of the canvas in line with their sleeves. You want to be sure that the pre-drilled holes of the front frame are facing up and the rear frame are facing down. Feed the front frame through the front sleeve. This is what it should look like with the holes facing up. Now repeat this step on the opposite side and this is what it should look like with the holes facing down. Now flip the rear end of the canopy over and connect your scissoring support bars. The shorter bar attaches to the front and they will easily snap together. Attach the remaining bar to the rear and repeat these steps on the opposite side. Now take your canopy over to your hull for attachment. With the scissor support bars and canvas cutouts facing down and towards the front, line the ends of the canopy up with the canopy mounts. Insert your 35 millimeter screw and secure it in place with a plastic screw-on knob that's included in your kit. You can use a Phillips head screwdriver to help tighten the bolts if needed. Repeat this step on the opposite side. Attach the front canopy straps to the corresponding D-rings. Grab the left canopy strap and walk it to the rear of the paddle ski. Attach it to the corresponding D-ring handle. Repeat this step on the opposite side, then adjust the straps until the canopy is taut and correctly positioned. The Sea Eagle 437 paddle ski is in a league of its own and is a dream on the water with speeds of up to 16 miles an hour with a Honda 5 horsepower engine. Packing up the paddle ski is quick and easy. Simply remove the canopy, motor, Scotty accessories, and seats. Removing the yoke bar and transom is optional, but it will allow for a smaller profile fold. Now there are many different ways to fold your paddle ski to suit your specific needs, such as wide and flat, or small and thick. However, I'll show you one way to pack it up. Locate your paddle ski bag and lay it out open. With your paddle ski in line with the end flaps, walk it over and on top of your bag until the front air valves are just past the edge of the side flaps. Remove the air valve caps. 
Now be sure your face is positioned away from and not over the air valves. Then push down on the center valve stems with your thumb and twist it a quarter turn to the right until it locks into the down open position. Repeat this step for the remaining caps. A quick rolling up and unrolling of your paddle ski will facilitate air removal. Fold one side in and over the floor. At the rear, take note of your rear seat strap buckles because you'll be making your first fold forward in between the two. Fold the remaining side in and over the floor and make your first fold forward. Notice how this seam lines up just outside the edge of the side flaps. Fold the nose section in so it lays just inside the far edge of the side bag flaps. Remembering to lift with your legs, pick up the rear section and fold it forward at the seam. Push out any remaining air. Secure it with the bag end flaps first, followed by the side bag flaps. By folding them in, then passing the straps through both D-rings, back over the first, under the second, and cinch. If you find this video helpful and wish to see others like it, just click on the subscribe link in the lower left hand corner. Then hit the notification bell to be notified when we release new videos. Remember to smash that thumbs up button and share it with your family and friends. Post your comments and questions in the section below and I'll post links to the optional accessories and a video timeline so you can jump from one section to another by topic in the video description below. Until next time, I'm Hawaiian Dan with CEO.com and I'll see you out on the water. Aloha.